when you take a look at junk bond ETFs, what does the exposure within those ETF structures look like to the energy space? And if it's substantial, is that something we need to worry about? Yeah, so if you look at, like you talked about HYG, most liquid, most traded, um, high yield ETF, most assets, it's seen its energy exposure go from 10% to 15% in the last three years, which investors should be aware of. Um, one of the things going on in high yield debt right now is that a lot of energy high yield debt is sitting at that crossover between uh, high yield and investment grades, so triple B and double B. Um, so as oil rates are falling, there's a lot more likely to be downgraded, uh, depending on how those companies are hedged. And But there, the thing is, it might not be a bad thing, right? We have a bunch of ETFs here uh, that have really high exposure to oil. And the last time we saw a huge fall in oil was in late 2015. And in 2016, a lot of these ETFs have severely outperformed in 2016 versus overall the broader based HYG. So if you think that oil is going to flat here or going to stop falling or even rise, some of these other ETFs might be a better choice. Um, well, exactly. If you do want exposure to junk ETFs, but you would rather not have the exposure to the energy complex, what is on offer? Yeah, so there's uh, HYXE, which is a ticker offered by iShares. It's the high yield sector of X energy. Um, so what you get here is iShares launched this in late 2016 after the downfall of oil in 2015 through early 2016. And ironically enough, it basically launched right at the bottom of oil. So it launched at a time where no one was going to use it, but now might be a time for it to shine. And it's just indicative of what happens in the ETF world. There's a lot of things that happen are big movements and trades, and people are worried about their exposure to energy all of a sudden. And then some ETF issuer launches an ETF. And by the time it launches, it's often past the time for that trade to even work. So hopefully uh, you guys were paying attention. So I actually have money in ETFs. I think it's a great way to stay diversified. And um, if you're a new investor, uh, picking stocks is fine, but I do feel like you should definitely have more in ETFs than less in stocks this way. As you could learn, you can then pick more and more stocks and hold less ETFs. And uh, I am a big fan of the high yield bond ETFs because I like the dividend payments and you're guaranteed a payment. Um, but unfortunately, the prices have not been stable. And an ETF that I would recommend, but it's, it's actually a mutual fund, is PCN by PIMCO. It pays a 7% rate of return. Um, but unfortunately, it's a very volatile. So it was trading between $16 and $18. And I really... Um, don't like the fact that you know I bought in you know most of my buys at 17 and 18 and then all of a sudden bam even though it pays a 7% yield you you, you can see uh, swings of 10 15 percent but let me know your think about uh, thoughts about this and how uh, the oil market is actually affecting the ETF rates of uh, junk bonds um, and I will talk to you guys soon